I became a sociopath or I am a sociopath because of certain wiring and because of the circumstances in which I was raised. Hello. Mike, Mike testing. Uh, Kanika, you look beautiful, but you smell really bad. So do you. Hey guys, it's Kanika. Welcome back to my channel. I should probably say that to myself because I've been gone for four months. When I told you all, I'd be gone for less than a month, but we'll get into that. Please make sure you like and subscribe. It really, really helps me if you do subscribe. That makes me able to keep giving out content and sharing my view on things. Also, I just want to say that I did my own makeup today, so if I look shitty, it's because I did it. I can't really be trusted with this sort of stuff, I don't know anything, but don't blame my makeup artist because she didn't. she's not responsible for this at all. So I've been gone for four months, let's address that. It's been kind of a very hectic sort of time, I've had lots of stuff going on so my book got published my father had brain surgery my partner's uh, grandmother has not been feeling great and we also got two new kittens which was really really great and I've spent a lot of time just bonding with them and you'll get to meet them at the end of this video so today I wanted to talk to you about how I became a sociopath I think that's a bit of a questionable phrase because I think that nobody really becomes a sociopath because of certain things that happen to them but that it's a, just an amalgamation of nature and nurture and it's just something you are unfortunately but I can kind of explain the setting in which I grew up and came to realize that this is how I am. I've been reading through comments quite often, even though I've been posting. There's a couple of camps that you guys stay in. So there's people who support me for coming out and like talking about these issues publicly because not many people do, which is understandable because of the stigma and you know, it's just really hard sometimes. Then there's people who say I'm not actually a sociopath because I don't really fit the stereotype of it all. And then there's the people who think sociopaths should be locked on an island somewhere away from the rest of society because they've faced sociopathic or narcissistic abuse and those are really heartbreaking for me because I know plenty of people with ASPD and NPD who are just trying to get better and they just want relationships that will help improve them and make them feel loved but there's just so much hatred for them and without them doing anything just for existing. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I grew up. My family is a nuclear family. I have a brother and I live with my parents. They didn't split up or anything. It was pretty constant all throughout. So when I was little, I was, how old was I? I was, I was three. That's like the first memory I have was my dad taking me to the shops and buying me a Barbie that I've been whining about for a while. It was kind of a strange dynamic because I have a chronic illness which isn't really related to you know this part of my life but it's called thalassemia so thalassemia is essentially anemia but times 100 and um, I got diagnosed when I was in New Zealand and because of this I always got a lot of special attention from my parents. My mum would always like take me to the hospital for blood transfusions or to get my medicines and all that. But my dad would more like give me gifts and just show me like special affection that he didn't really show to any other people. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this really because it's such a complex situation. When you're sick as a child, all of the attention is always on you. And when it isn't, it just feels really awful and you can't really understand it. My dad, he was quite tyrannical. That's the word that people would use. So it was quite scary in terms of punishment and he wouldn't be the one you go to to talk about your feelings with. You kind of just went to him if you had like trouble at school or you needed help studying, that sort of stuff. So he wasn't like a friend. My mum was like a friend. She was really, really loving, really caring. She'd be very affectionate, whereas my dad, he wasn't 
you know, a mean person or anything. It's just that he did not show emotions at all and he actively discouraged us from having any. So if I were to start crying, he would get quite angry and he wouldn't talk to me until I stopped crying and calmed down. Whereas my mum would fawn over me if I was crying. I knew that crying made me get punished and I didn't want to do that. I knew it made me look weak, so I didn't want to do that either. So even at the hospital when I'm getting needles, I was just like, just keeping it together, not crying, not doing anything because I didn't want to look weak or stupid. But when I was growing up, from then on, everything was kind of centered on me. And it, it's kind of a big burden to bear because not only was it because I was unwell, it was also that I was a high scholastic achiever. I also, you know, was very creative. I wrote books, anthologies of poetry and short stories. And so this kind of burden was always on me. And I felt like if I didn't live up to it, there was something wrong with me. This kind of led to a really bad downward spiral because I also started child modeling at about 10. And if someone didn't value me because of like what I was thinking or what I was, what I looked like, it would feel like I was being punished. And I don't think that I was, but it's kind of shaped who I am today. I still seek the same kind of validation that I've seeked since childhood. And it's, yeah, it's, it's not a good place to be. You don't want other people to validate your self-worth because you will end up terribly, terribly depressed, as I did. As a child and then going into high school, I was, I was a pretty, pretty bad person, I'd say. Not a bad person inherently, but I did some really bad things and I didn't really feel any guilt or remorse or any, any of those kinds of things. So there's nothing stopping me from doing what I was doing other than punishment. There was just a point, by, by the time I got to university, Sorry, that was my cat snorting. She snorts a lot because she has a flat face. Anyway, basically what reeled me back in was at university. I was kind of drowning in everything and I realized like nothing I was doing was working for me. And I just felt this like immense emptiness and sadness that I couldn't get rid of. I wasn't a party or anything. I wasn't promiscuous. I didn't even date anyone until I turned 21. It was, it was just this kind of like hollowness that nobody else seemed to have. And so I went to see a psychiatrist because I thought I must be depressed. There must be something wrong, like hormonally, chemically, something. I kind of started, it's not empathy. I don't think that empathy is the be all and end all. I don't think it dictates who's a good person and who isn't. I think compassion is something that we can choose and I chose to have compassion for my friends, my family, for people around me. I got really involved in, you know, social justice causes which were kind of embarrassing at the time. And it was, I guess, the doctor really helped me out, although I was a bit shocked with the ASPD diagnosis. Obviously there's just so many bad connotations when it comes to a cluster B disorder. and. I keep reading in the comments that people with, without guilt or empathy can't be trusted and it's, it's just appalling to me because <laughs> are you saying that humans are only controlled by empathy and guilt? Because tell me where is the empathy for women who've been raped and then stoned to death? Or where is the empathy for someone who has been executed for a crime they've not committed? How is that's still happening when people with empathy are the ones pulling the strings here. I think that's ridiculous. I honestly do. I live by a standard of moral codes. I don't do things because I know they're bad. I know it's a choice and I will always say it's a choice. I choose not to cheat on my current partner. I choose not to be violent or verbally abusive. I choose not to be a shitty person. It's not something that's got to do with anything that's hardwired in my brain or maybe became that way while I was growing up. I don't know what you're going to achieve by otherizing people like us. We're already in the shadows. There's also more comments, let me get into that, who think that I'm not a real sociopath because I'm out in public. <laughs> that, that, is, that one takes the cake for me honestly because you guys have 
bullied people into being in the shadows. So when someone comes forward, they can't possibly be a sociopath, right? <laughs> anyway, so I personally want to advocate for accepting people with personality disorders. It's not glorifying by any stretch of the imagination. I just, I don't know, it's really, really troublesome for me to know that people who are just trying to seek a community and get help are being ridiculed or attacked. And obviously because I'm a woman, the main attacks are the way I speak or my looks or things like that or some neurotypicals will try and trigger me because I'm a narcissist so they can attack different parts of me and I'll go crumbling at their feet of course. That's just really harmful man, like why are you doing that? That, that just sucks. Like why do you want to make someone feel bad? Like I don't do that, I could do that to you but I don't. So I was basically becoming more mindful when I was seeing my shrink back when I, when I was at university and it really helped me to kind of understand that what I was doing was contributing to that empty feeling and that complete sadness that it just doesn't go away no matter how hard you try. I went through some very violent sexual assaults which were pretty bad and they didn't really help with the whole mental health situation. It, it's been a rough experience just dealing with ASPD, just dealing with depression, all that sort of stuff. It, it all ties in together but there's just that extra layer of stigma. I don't want to even be associated with it because I know that it will cost me jobs or it will cost me sponsors but I can't help how I am as a person, all I can do is make good choices. I became a sociopath or I am a sociopath because of certain wiring and because of the circumstances in which I was raised. I don't think that it's right or even morally acceptable to treat people as a leper just because of something they cannot control. Similar to say bipolar disorder, I mean are they all monsters? I can understand that there are people out there who've been abused by sociopaths and narcissists but you're really throwing those words out there and they mean things, like words have meanings. Those are diagnostic terms. Narcissistic personality disorder is a diagnostic term. Calling someone a nar narcissist for absolutely no reason other than, oh, they might be a little bit vain or arrogant that's ridiculously harmful like <laughs> you're just saying if someone's horrible they must be a narcissist or a sociopath and yeah it's just it's the hyperbole and the readiness to just blame it on the narcs or blame it on the socios is so damaging kids who do have conduct disorder and who are leaning towards antisocial personality disorder they deserve a community they deserve a space to go where they can talk about their feelings where they can get the help that they need so they do not become violent offenders it's basically violent offender or healthy and supported so please be a contributor to helping people and to reduce the stigma and the shame and basically all of that sort of traumatizing bullshit honestly anyway i know i rambled a lot for that one i just have a lot of feelings and i've been gone for a while so please make sure you like and subscribe and if you want to buy my book that would be freaking amazing and i will love you forever for doing that so this is my new little baby crosby he's four months old and he's squirming to get away, so I'm gonna let him go. But he has the most concerned looking face I've ever seen. Say hello, Crosby. Okay, I'm, okay, he's, he's running away. I'm not gonna let him run away.